Today I'm going to show how I use vitamin in a session uh, by processing different tracks and some groups. Vitamin is not an EQ, it's not a compressor, it's not a distortion, it's not a stereo enhancer, but it's a bit of all of those in one plugin, which makes it really easy um, to just push faders up and hearing different sounds and you know the way it changes um, the tone of an instrument or of a whole mix or of a group. I have here a drum group track and uh, this is the direct level so I'm gonna just mute that and then I can just bring up the different frequency ranges so it's very easy to effectively rebalance the drum kit and also I have the width control with which I can control the stereo image of each one of the bands so for instance on the bass I can just make it mono I can widen the high frequencies and then where I can hear that the snare is a little bit off-center, I can just narrow down the stereo image on that particular frequency range. Now I can bring those down a bit and reintroduce the direct level and then see how I can just color the whole drum kit very easily. Just bring the output down a bit. I can also solo each one of the bands so I can set the frequency range of the crossover. So setting the cross points while soloing is very easy to hear which band um, this includes. It's really easy to manipulate the kick drum sound with vitamin. All I have to do is bring up the low frequency, maybe higher than that. Try to find where the actual hit, which is about there, 2 3K, and then bring up the direct level. In fact, that's all I have to do because now I can control the level of the punch and of the lows very easily. So let's hear it bypassed. So that's all I have to do to that kick. I can obviously play with the punch control. I can make it more even by lowering the attack time because then it will basically compress the sound very quickly, not allowing the different levels of the attacks to filter through. With the snare drum I can take two approaches. One is to keep it natural and just enhance those frequencies that sound good basically or I can re-sculpt the whole sound. So if we, tr we start by trying to enhance some frequencies we need some top, we need some low mid, something more narrow and we need some lows and then we can bring the rest of the bands up gradually so that's just enhancing the tone of the snare if 
we compare it to the unprocessed. So we are a bit louder, we can bring the level down a bit. Yeah, so it's already sounding a lot nicer. Now the other approach is to completely rebuild the snare sound. So I'm going to reset this. I'm going to lose the direct signal altogether and start by just listening to the punch, to the actual hit of the snare. Around six, seven hundred maybe. And then start bringing the other frequencies up. So I have complete control over the color of the snare. And then I can control the punch. I can make it more, more punchy, hitting harder. I can give it even more input and compensate by bringing the output level right down. Creating a very hard hitting snare or I can bring the punch control down creating more compressed more even sounding snare sound let's bypass that yeah so it sounds similar but just more of everything On this overhead track, I want to try to tame the cymbals. They sound, they hit like very hard, especially on the downbeat. Um, so again, I'm just going to take the direct signal right down and starting to hear what I what I have here. So first of all, I'm going to bring the punch right down. So already it sounds more compressed and more in control. And then by basically identifying where the symbol is most prominent, which I suspect is around here, around 3K, I can just make this band mono. And by doing that, Maybe that's too much, so I'm just going to narrow it down a bit. And then I can bring it down in level and compensate by bringing the high frequencies up. There's a kind of a clunky sound around the 200 area. So I'm just going to bring that down. And although the overheads are kind of much thinner, but I think in a mix situation it would be much more effective. And I can always bring the direct signal and mix it together with those treated bands. But I think that for this it would sound better without it. That's bypass. And with it, it just sounds cleaner more compact and I think it will work much better within the mix. With the room mics I want to make it sound more like an effect rather than something substantial within the drum kick sound uh, because the main sound will, will come from the kick snare and overheads so for the room I can really find a frequency range and just use that um, so I would go for the mid-range make it a bit wider 
and that immediately gives it some interesting kind of vintage sound, which I quite like. And I can make it more punchy, so you can hear the kick more. Maybe bring the lows back in. That sounds quite good, actually. Bit of top. Maybe a bit lower. Something like that. Let's hear it without. So it gives it a nice character, very distinctive sound, which can be blended with the rest of the kit, basically.